Hello, today we're going to be talking about the process of translocation and what actually happens to move sugar from one place in a plant to another. So we're going to start up in the leaf and the leaf is where photosynthesis is going to happen and we're going to have some photosynthetic cells that are producing plenty of sucrose. And uh, they produce this sucrose, so we have a high concentration of sucrose. Translocation is the process of being able to move this sucrose from one part of the plant to another. Now, the place where we have created sucrose is called a source, and the place where we're going to end up depositing our sucrose is going to be called a sink. Um, and you can think of it a bit like um, the source as the tap and the sink as the plug hole. Um, the source produces the sucrose, the sink um, uses the sucrose. And so at the sink we have um, a cell that is probably respiring and using this sucrose um, or it could be storing the sucrose as starch um, or in some fruit. Um, this is a respiring cell and in the leaf we have this photosynthesizing cell and it's going to move from the source to the sink. Um, now, how might that happen? What might be the mechanism of translocation? The main theory that we need to know about and we're going to talk about today is called the mass flow theory. And there's evidence for and against it, um, which we'll talk about in another video, but um, we'll focus on what it is and what it states to start off with. Okay, so what I've drawn here is I've just added in the xylem and the phloem we can tell the difference because the xylem is this continuous column of water as the phloem actually is made up of these cells that have sieve plates in between them and, and we have some companion cells here as well. They are the cells that contain all the living aspects that a phloem cell might need to survive. So they've got the mitochondria um, to supply the phloem with what they need to survive. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is that we've made this sucrose and so it's going to diffuse into our companion cells. And that happens down the fusion gradient. We've got lots of sucrose being made here and we've got no sucrose here. So it's going from a high concentration to a low concentration. Now, to get from the companion cell into the phloem, it doesn't actually happen by diffusion, but it happens by co-transport. Uh, and so using ATP, um, hydrogen ions are pumped into the cell wall and then across. And so this co-transport of sucrose uh, with these hydrogen ions. Um, and that's going to get it into the phloem. We sometimes call these phloem cells uh, the sieve tube cells um, because we're comparing that and saying actually the phloem is kind of made up of the companion cells and the sieve tubes uh, and so that's why we sometimes call them the sieve tube cells but once it gets in there what's going to happen is that it's going to lower the water potential um, of the sieve tube cell we're adding in some more solute so the solution is going to become more concentrated that's going to lower the water potential and so water from the xylem that's flowing next to it is going to move in uh, from a high water potential to a low water potential um, because obviously the xylem is pretty much pure water with a few mineral ions in there as well and so it's going to move down a water potential gradient into the phloem. Now because we've got water moving in um, that's going to create a high hydrostatic pressure inside the, the phloem, inside the sieve tubes. And in, in the mass flow theory, it's this high hydrostatic pressure that is going to be creating the movement from source to sink. So that's everything that's happening at the source. Uh, now let's flip back to the sink and think about what's happening here. So, so we have this respiring cell that is using up sucrose in respiration, um, or it might be storing sucrose as starch somewhere else in the plant. Now, because we're using up the sucrose there it's wanting to get more sucrose into the cell and so that happens by active transport and so sucrose is actively transported 
out of the flow and sieve tubes into where it's needed. And so what's going to happen then, because we're moving sucrose out, we're creating a lower water potential over here in the sink cell that's actually going to mean that water follows this active transport uh, going from where there's a higher water potential to a lower water potential. And so because water's moving out, that's going to mean that, that lowers the, the hydrostatic pressure here. So we, we end up with a low hydrostatic pressure. And that is the key thing that's going to cause the water and the sugar to move. Because we have this high hydrostatic pressure here, and then we've created a low hydrostatic pressure where we need the sucrose to move to, um, then that's causing the main movement of uh, water and sugar inside the phloem. And so that's the main process uh, set up by the source, creating a high hydrostatic pressure, and here set up by the sink, creating a low hydrostatic pressure. The difference in pressure causes the phloem uh, to push the sucrose uh, from source to sink. Now that's the process. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, what the evidence is for this. How do we how do we know that this is what's going on? Why do we think this is what's going on? And about some experiments that we can do uh, about translocation. See you next time.